Assalamu alaikum. You are listening to Dear Ustada Raida with your host Raida Shah Aido. This podcast is about applying radical empathy and prophetic mercy to different life challenges. This podcast is brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the Global Islamic Seminary. At Seekers Guidance, we believe in keeping reliable Islamic knowledge free and accessible for all those who seek it. You can help us keep all our content and services free and also earn the rewards of an ongoing and worthwhile charity by making a small pledge at seekersguidance.org slash donate. Even $10 a month will go a long way in helping us produce content and services and in keeping them accessible to everyone. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum dear listeners. Welcome back to Dear Ustada Raida. I am your host Raida Shah Aidil and today's episode, episode 8, is titled Being a Daughter, a Woman and Living This Life. Question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am tired. I don't feel like I understand my purpose anymore especially when I see so many of my sisters in Islam living a life of independence. I am confused about exactly what Islam says on the matter. It has been my long-held belief that a girl or woman doesn't leave her parents' home except by marriage. Am I wrong? I was under the impression that this is based upon a hadith. What happens if she doesn't get married? Is she forced to leave and find her independence? I am one of three sisters one who has gotten married, one who lives independently of us, and me. I do not wish for marriage, but I see myself as being responsible for my parents as they get older. I have no mahram other than my elderly father, no other family here. I do work part-time, alhamdulillah. Should I leave the home and leave my parents alone? I don't want to because I am afraid to lose them in any sense, even by their own natural end. I sometimes feel like nothing I do is right before my father. I feel like I studied and obeyed them in this regard, but now I am so tired with how pointless everything is. I studied two degrees, trained for a long time, and all for what? I remain confused about my faith. I have lost friends and become more isolated. I genuinely believe women need a mahram to travel randomly around the globe if for pleasure and not for purpose. I've become disheartened, disillusioned for clinging onto things that others maybe don't consider important. Please advise me. Answer. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I pray this finds you well. May Allah reward you for reaching out to us. Living alone. Dear sister, please know that Allah knows the deepest contents of your heart. If you do not want to move out from your parents' home, then please, by all means, remain there. Please do not compare yourself to your sisters, as tempting as that may be. Three of you are completely different individuals with unique strengths and challenges. Your responsibility is to measure yourself against the yardstick of what is pleasing to Allah in this present moment. Please refer to these links to clarify your confusion about the permissibility of an unmarried Muslim woman living living alone. Can I, as a woman, live on my own, Shafi? And can an unmarried young woman live alone? Exception. The only scenario where, in which I would encourage you to move out from your parents' home is this. If staying with your parents were harming you in some way. It does not have to be outward abuse, but if you feel that staying with your parents is contributing to feelings of stagnation, then perhaps it is time for you to make a change. Caring for parents. It is praiseworthy for you to take on the main responsibility of caring for your parents in their old age. However, please know that goodness to your parents remains a personally obligatory act for all of your sisters. Your commitment to caring for your parents does not lift the responsibility from their shoulders. I suspect that because you live with your parents and your sisters take you for granted, they know that you are there to, every day to be of service to your parents, so perhaps they do not try harder to be there for them too. 
I encourage you to complete this transformative course with Sheikh Rami Nasur. Excellence of Parents, Muhammad Mawlud Bir Al Walidin explained your parents' rights and how to fulfill them. Father, Allah Most High says in the Quran, and I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. You describe that nothing you do is right by your father. I am sorry, this is deeply painful for any daughter. Please know that when a father is chronically displeased with his children, it actually reflects his own chronic displeasure with himself. I encourage you not to live your life for your parents, especially not for your father. This can be very hard to do at first because it has become an ingrained habit. Live for Allah and within the realms of permissibility, please do things that bring you joy. Find ways to nourish your heart, body, mind and soul. Please know that perhaps creating some physical distance between you and your father may help you realign with your values instead of always being drawn to what is pleasing to him. You were created to worship Allah and your journey to that includes working on your weaknesses and harnessing your strengths. Life coaching. I suggest that you look up one of the many Muslim life coaches online. Find someone who resonates with you and commit to exploring ways to improve your life. What are you passionate about? What are you good at? What do you want to get better at? Marriage and possible depression. If you describe that you do not want to be married, is this because you have been hurt before or because you genuinely are not interested in marriage? You have also described yourself as losing friends, feeling lonely, and being exhausted. Could your low moods and lack of interest in marriage be something you could explore within the safety of a culturally sensitive counsellor's office? Travel. Please refer to this link for clarification. Can I travel by plane without a mahram? Spiritual nourishment. Dear sister, your soul is yearning for relief. Please feed your soul with the cool, sweet waters of du'a, the prayer of need, reciting and listening to Qur'an, and other acts of nearness to Allah. Clarify your confusion about your faith through seeking out healing knowledge. Seek as hub courses are in abundance, alhamdulillah, so decide which one resonates with you the most and strive to complete them. I pray this has been helpful. Please keep in touch. Please see selected prophetic prayers for spiritual physical and emotional well-being by chaplain ibrahim law subhanallah this is um sounds like it's a, it's a really sad question and reading between the lines it sounds like the questioner has had a lot of things on her mind for a long time and is probably confused like okay i'm doing everything right by the book why am i so unhappy no, and it's really tricky and I'm really glad that the questioner reached out to seek some clarification and um, subhanAllah it's, this is the thing about having having siblings it's, it's very I guess culturally ingrained I would say part of human nature even to oh look at what they're doing and feel like you're falling short and they look really happy I'm not and so on but truly, everybody is struggling. Um, depending on how close and how connected you are to your siblings and your friends and whatnot, you know, you may or may not know the full story <laughs> of what's really going on. But I can guarantee you, every single person on this planet is going through some kind of pain. You know, perhaps more than us, some more than others, some cope better than others, some don't, and so on. But Smala, this young woman sounds like she's. She's worked very hard to do what's right, and I pray that she reaps the fruits of that. Because we're all very, we're all human. It, it's nice when things go well, <laughs> you know, like, and not sort of hold on to this idea like it'll only be okay in the akhirah, and sort of feel like a kind of like sacrificial lamb of some sort. It's like yeah, it's not a really healthy way to live. You know, like the, the the believer is able to have gratitude for little things every day, and that really helps to cultivate, you know, positivity and um, gratefulness and all this good stuff. 
But that's not really possible to do when you're depressed. So again, go back to the root of the issue. You know, perhaps it's a, it's just a way of life, the calcification, certain habits, thought patterns, behaviors, stagnation that have contributed to her being in this state. You know, and it's really heartbreaking to see that she's trying so hard to please her father. And I think most Muslim girls, most Muslim daughters have this very natural ingrained need to want to please our parents. You know, but it's really tough when said parent, you know, is just never happy, you know, and I don't know why this culture of like tough love, I mean that's that's not love. This idea of you know, not showing your children that you love them, that you're content with them, that you're pleased with them, that you're proud of them. I'm not sure what, is, what, the, what, what the fear of that is. It's this fear that, oh, the minute you, you're you sure that you're happy, they'll stop trying. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Human beings, subhanAllah, the way we're wired is to attain mastery, to, to love, to learn, to be curious, to be motivated, all these very healthy, positive things. And when parents sort of celebrate that with their children that's great it's like win-win you know but if parents are chronically like oh okay you had 99 percent in the exam what about the hundred <laughs> i mean how is that that's pretty sad and the poor kid is trying so hard please cut him or her some slack you know so if you're a parent no matter how old your child is you know please know that they yearn for your approval and your affection so give it to them freely you know, because that relationship between parent and child, subhanAllah, ya Latif, it is such an amana, and it's pretty much the default template for how they will expect to be treated by everyone else in their life. You know, so it's kind of the situation where you hear of like young women who make really poor relationship choices and marry the wrong kind of guy or look for the wrong kind of attention. Like, the question to ask is not why it's not why is she doing this? So like what's driving her? What's what need is she trying to fulfill? Very natural need to want to be loved, to be accepted. And if she doesn't feel that at home, well guess where she's gonna try to look for it? Outside the home. You know? And he may not always be in the most wholesome of places and this young woman is saying that she's not interested in marriage. So that's unusual. Because again, we're wired for connection. We're wired to want companionship. Like Allahu Alam, perhaps from the life that she's led and taking on that responsibility to be the one to care for her parents, she's decided that subconsciously, you know, like this, I'm taking on this role, therefore I do not have the space for her husband. And that's really sad because the Sharia has ordained like there's space for everything and everyone this it's it's a balance you know you can be happily married you can have children and you can also look after your elderly parents and especially if you have siblings this is not a one person show you know i mean like subhanallah like you hear of every family has different stories like and again, so much of it stems back about what happened in those early formative years. Like parents who worked really hard to stay connected to their children through thick and thin, you know, whatever it may be. When they become elderly parents, their, their children who are inevitably married, children who of their own, busy, they like, like they rush to want to look after their mom or their dad because that connection is there right like there's no need to like hold the stick of obligation it's you know fardul ayn for you to have birul wadi day like you don't even have to tell them that they know because they love their parents they're connected they feel so grateful they have kids of their own they know how torturous that can be sometimes upon allah you know so that connection is there but this this that that only happens naturally by consequence when those elderly parents, when they were young and healthy and strong, when they laid those foundations right for their children, you know, I would imagine that's an, a natural scenario. And, you know, when parents raised their kids on the dean, you know, showed them compassion, then, you know, made dua, lots of dua, oh Allah, you know, help me raise my kids well. Made lots of dua, oh Allah, when I'm old, please care for me. 
you know, please let my children be patient with me, those kinds of things. Inshallah, that's like the natural consequence. And it's not like if you have three children, then the oldest looks after you. It's like, no, the fardul ain, like, that obligation is on every child. And yes, realistically speaking, if one child is overseas, another child is in a very demanding career, then it does a lot of the time fall on one child, the one adult child. You know, and may Allah, if you are in a situation where you're caring for your elderly parent or parents, like, may Allah reward you and make that your path to Jannatul Firdaus. Because it's not easy. Let's be honest, it's not easy. Caring for an adorable, helpless newborn is very different than caring for an elderly parent who's cranky and sick. You know, it's it's a very different experience, subhanAllah. But it's still it's still important, it still has to be done. You know, but this young woman, subhanAllah, it seems like Allah Alam, again, I'm reading between the lines, I don't get that much information, I'm doing the best I can with what I know. It sounds like because she's got a sister who moved out and another one who also moved out but is married, it kind of like naturally fell on her shoulders. Like, okay, you're living with mom and dad, you look after them. You know, but this is not something you can like, what's it called? It's not something you can like tick the box. Like, okay, you know, parents are fine. They're living with sister so and so. I, you know, I'll just visit once in a while. It's like, no, you know, like, each of us, when we meet Allah, will be accountable for what we do. And your relationship with your parent, no matter how challenging that parent may be, that's on you. It's not something someone else can do for you. It's not something that you can outsource. You know, and like, alhamdulillah, like I'm a mom of two very small little girls. Allah, please make dua for them. Oh, and like, they both have a space in my heart. You know, and I, as unimaginable as it is for me to ever imagine them being grown up and married and having kids of their own, like, Allah, Allah, inshallah, that will come to pass. You know, and I make dua that they'll be compassionate with me and patient with me if I ever reach old age, <laughs> you know, and I'm cranky and, and have health issues and whatnot. But I bring that dua to Allah directly and not get too attached to the outcome well, because I guess another issue I guess we see it definitely more in ethnic Muslim cultures is this sense of of course I'm going to live with my you know my son and his wife and their children of course I'm going to live with you know my unmarried daughter you know, and it's it's tough right because sometimes situations are challenging and there's a need for honest conversation it sounds like this young woman needs to have an honest conversation with herself. Like, this life that she's leading, is this something that brings her joy? And joy is, is important for Muslims too. It's not like something you reserve for pop psychology in the West. No. no the believer with a happy heart, inshallah, is a believer who has high hopes in Allah, who has high hopes in creation, who has is easier, you know, forgives easier, you know, is compassionate to everyone these kinds of things you know and it's like subhanallah it's like it's interesting she talked about the point about believing that women need a mahram i'm like yeah totally and that's really important so perhaps she can i don't know organize a travel traveling session with her father and her mom you know and like this is important and i pray that allah helps grant her healing and inshallah helps her feel open to the concept of marriage, you know, and help her feel more balanced and sends her a righteous and loving companion, you know, and helps her decide to reach out to her sisters and say, hey, I'm going to need some help. Mom and dad are your mom and dad too, <laughs> you know, Very respectfully, of course, you know, and, um, and I mean, each of us, we need to take responsibility for our lives. If something is not working, take ownership. Figure out, what can I do to make this better? What can I do to make things work? And mashallah, there is an abundance of life, Muslim life coaches out there. It's incredible. So save up, take your pick, do your market research, whatever the term is. You know, figure out, you know, with the support of a life coach or even a counselor if there's a depressive aspect. 
to lack of motivation figure out what can i do better because alhamdulillah for every day that we've been given life there is a chance for change and a chance for betterment a chance for betterment inshallah and i hope this has been helpful i look forward to sharing my next podcast with you um wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin nabi ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh thank you for listening we hope that you found immense benefit in today's episode please take a moment to spread this benefit by sharing this podcast with your friends and family thank you